Coming up on Techzilla, wireless music for the bedroom, the perfect mouse and keyboard combo, your first soldering iron, and an awesome tool for fixing OS X. So grab that last slice of cold pizza and grab your favorite corner of the couch, because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by GoToMeeting. Verizon Droid apps and click it or tick it. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you already have. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the finest bread in Sonoma County, we've got an answer for you. Della Fattoria. Ooh. Magnifique. Delicious. And if we don't, we'll track down someone who does. But the bread thing, we got it nailed. Della Fattoria. Mm, promise you. Bready. <laughs> uh, YouTube turned five years old this week and is serving two billion videos a day. That is two billion, count them, two billion cat videos. Check out YouTube. YouTube.com slash five year for a timeline, video wall, and global map. Purchased by Google in October 2006 for $1.65 billion, it reached 1 billion videos served per day in October of 2009. Took a serious turn, much like Twitter did last summer, as Keyboard Cat was supplanted by videos posted from the rebellion in Tehran. Yeah, and the site actually launched a rental service. Not a lot of people realize this. In April of this year, it's an odd, but I gotta say it's kind of compelling. It's indie movies, Bollywood and Hollywood, mostly Bollywood and indie movies and a whole bunch of anime. Anime is on the rise there. And they rent between buck ninety nine and five ninety nine. Yeah, as far as I've heard, it's not doing too hot. Like, not a lot of people are renting videos on YouTube. It's a, it's a mind thing. Right. You know, after you've been watching free videos for so YouTube, long on YouTube. Keyboard Cat, movies from Iran, you know, <laughs> anywhere cool. else, real movies are rental. I can kind of see where the disconnect is. Um, and we'll be beaten by our marketing folks who will probably videotape it and post it to YouTube. If we don't tell you that, yes, we have a YouTube channel that you can find and subscribe to at YouTube.com slash TechHD. That's all the Texilla viewers and also HD Nation videos. Mm -hmm. And if you've been wondering where the piratebay.org has gone, they were dumped by their ISP after the MPAA secured an injunction against the site in the regional court of Hamburg. That's Hamburg, Germany, right? Hamburg. 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 Hamburg, Germany. This is the third time courts have ordered ISPs to take the Pirate Bay offline. Uh, chances are the site will reappear in the near future, yeah, though. Think. Yeah, <laughs> though we expect LimeWire, one of the last remaining commercial peer to peer file trading services, to disappear later this summer. Mm hmm. The RIA stomped them, and, and this court case has been running for like four years. The RIA says basically 93% of the traffic on LimeWire infringed copyrighted material. The RIA wants up to 150000 per copyright violation. Ouch. Multiply that by 50 million unique monthly users, most of whom are trading multiple files. Even like five bucks a file would probably financially crush the peer-to-peer -peer service. Mm -hmm. Bam. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Meanwhile, Google, Intel, and Sony are expected to announce a new smart TV platform at Google I.O. this week. Whether it's a set-top box or a way to stuff Intel's new Dragon Point Atom CPUs into ATTVs, who knows, but the money is on either a Chrome OS or an Android OS. And I'm thinking Chrome OS, set-top device, at least temporarily, to bring video into the HDTV world. Very cool, and though I do not know how it will be used, apparently they're going to show a clip of Texilla at some point at Google I.O. Really? I got a note from their PR people, <gasps> so I don't know, maybe we said something good, maybe we said something <laughs> bad, I don't know why they're showing it or what they're we're showing. trouble. But please don't yell at us. Um, but let's go to our first question of the day. They Robert, can take us to lunch. They, they have all those lunch nice. places at Google. They shut out down a bunch of them, though. I, Food I, options are not as good. Well, they're better than here. Uh, Robert's a college <laughs> senior looking to get some soldering on. Let's see if we can help him out. I'm in college majoring in computer engineering and plan on taking two senior design courses this year. I would like to know a good quality soldering kit between $50 and $75. I prefer to go to a brick and mortar store, but an online option will also be fine. Could you also show how to properly solder as well in a system-like episode of the show? Robert. Oh boy. Robert, we normally run to a local electronics shop. There's three or four right here. It's San Francisco. It's the Silicon Valley or we go to Fry's. We're going to point you towards a couple of places online since we have no idea what's nearby in your very own Pensacola, Florida. You're 
computer engineering professors might be able to recommend some good local shops. We're also going to point you to the most excellent soldering tutorial from David Calkins in the Soldering Your Own Headphone Amp episode of System. It is just the thing to get you started. And to get more detailed, check out sparkfun.com's Soldering Basic. We've got a link in the show notes. These folks are awesome makers. They supply everything from Arduino boards to actually imagine turning a, a rotary dial into a portable cell phone. That's Badass. how cool these people are. <laughs> yeah. For tools, one of the nicest kits that we've seen is a little over your 75 price range. It's Make Magazine's Deluxe Make Electronics Toolkit, which sells for $115 at Makershed.com. It includes a 30-watt soldering iron and stand, a digital multimeter, a Panavise Junior Vice for holding printed uh, circuit boards. Panavise is totally rock. Mm -hmm. A quarter pound of solder, a three 25-foot spools of wire, needle nose pliers, more tools, and a wee blinky kit to start you on your soldering career. I've done Wee Blinky before. You've done Wee Blinky? I've made the Wee Blinky. Yeah, last year at, uh, at Foo Camp, I did the Wee Blinky. It's an awesome entry-level soldering kit. It's like, super fun. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you might also pick up a Lenco Electronics Solder Practice Kit or Learn to Solder Kit from the store. Uh, the Solder Practice Kit has 163 solder points, including standard soldering connections, close tolerance soldering, and tack soldering. Uh, practice makes perfect, and this is definitely a nice way to practice. You can find that at makershed.com as well. If you're looking for something cheaper, SparkFun.com's toolkit Intermediate has a similar collection of tools, including a digital multimeter and one of Patrick's beloved brass sponges for 70 bucks. Yeah, once you've used a brass sponge, you will never use those little cheap yellow sponges that come on sunny. I know exactly the yellow sponges you're talking of. Uh, they, they're Speaking useless. Of, talking of? Talking of? Speaking they're, of? They're not totally useless. No, I but mean, compared they get the, to the brass sponge. The tip clean. In any case, if you want to go even cheaper, you can just pick up a Weller WP25 soldering iron, about $39 online. Pick up a brass sponge and some 6337 rosin core solder. A leaded solder is actually a lot easier to learn with. Just keep yourself in a ventilated room. You can find those at your local hardware store and bend yourself a soldering iron stand out of an old coat hanger. If you have a pair of pliers, you can do this. If you want to go a lot cheaper, sparkfun.com offers a solid 30 watt iron for 10 bucks on their website, along with a $3 brass sponge. It's $10 if you want a base soldering holder thingy for the sponge. Otherwise, just staple a brass sponge to a piece of wood with your little homemade coat hanger soldering stand. And the brass sponge is so much better for cleaning your soldering iron tip than regular sponges. While you're there, by the way, pick up one of their $4 solder vacuums, a $9 mm -hmm. can of solder tip tinner and cleaner, and a spool of rosin core solder, and you'll be good to go for, I'd say, around 50 bucks, depending on the shipping. That's what it is. The vacuum things. Mm -hmm. And then, when you're ready, if you decide you have more soldering in your Ayo. future, you can save your pennies and get yourself a big variable temperature soldering oh, station if that. you need one. You got a yellow uh, sponge. Yes, well, the, somebody <laughs> keeps removing the brass sponge. Oh, weird. So I'll find another brass sponge and nail it down to this one, but uh, I love adjustable uh, power soldering stations because they let me do everything from big, huge There's cables little to little tiny electronics. What's you have that? Your little I actually more often than not use uh, tape or just bend a piece of, a strip a piece of wire and mm. just use that to... You, if you could have seen my the, the hardwood floor of my Boston apartment when I was in college, <laughs> you would have seen a nice, a nice collection of burn marks all over the floor from not putting the soldering iron down properly. Eh. Speaking of which, what's a rental? What are you gonna do? <laughs> well, the other thing to do is make sure you don't drip, ever drip solder, have it burn through your pajamas, and leave a permanent no, mark in your leg. No, I have not done that. I'm glad to say that had yeah. never, never happened to me. Wear heavy pants. Keep the soldering iron and the solder and your little vice contraption well in the middle of the the table you're working on. Uh, use a big, giant, cheap baking sheet to solder on. That will keep you oh. from burning permanent holes into the surface of mom's mm -hmm. countertop. Uh, not that I know anything about that particular one personally. Still to come, what keyboard and mouse keep Veronica happy when she's in gaming mayhem? You're going to find out soon enough. But while we've got your attention, we want to thank one of our sponsors, GoToMeeting.com. GoToMeeting. If you run a business that depends on far-flung colleagues and far-flung clients across the globe, getting enough face-to-face -face time can be a real issue. Travel is expensive and time is short. So what do you do? Just turn to our sponsor, GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting can turn your PC into a virtual meeting room. Work and meet clients no matter where they are. You can meet face-to-face -face virtually with voice and chat so you can improve communication and strengthen relationships. Plus, you can share out your screen to demonstrate ideas, concepts, and products, or collaborate in real time with attendees on presentations, documents, and spreadsheets. Worried about eavesdroppers or hackers? Don't. 
go to a meeting, meet some of the most stringent security requirements so you can be confident that your meetings are kept private and free of any prying eyes or ears. And it's so easy to set up. Attendees don't need to sign up for the service to join your meeting, so cut back on the air travel, hotels, and rental cars and try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Just visit GoToMeeting.com slash Texilla. That's GoToMeeting.com slash Texilla for a free 30-day trial. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, Applejack. When it comes to troubleshooting OS X startup problems, you need to use either an OS X install DVD, a third-party disk, or an external drive with OS X installed. Not a big deal, right? Until you realize you forgot to pack those disks when you're traveling, or if you're at somebody's house, or if you threw them out, or if you just can't find them. If only there were a less cumbersome way to fix OS X. There is, people. It's called Applejack. It can troubleshoot any Mac via a simple command line menu. You can repair disks, similar to the function in disk utilities. You can repair permissions, clean up cache files, validate preference files, even clean up virtual memory. A word of warning, you can only run these in single user mode. That means when you install Applejack, don't run it from within a working session of OS X. Reboot the machine and activate it with the command S key combo when you hear the big Mac bong startup sound. Applejack won't fix every problem you'll find in OS X, but if you're looking for a simple way to troubleshoot most of OS X's major startup woes without a CD, DVD, or external drive, then you should download Applejack today. Be ready. This next question comes from Dave, who writes in, I reckon it would be great to have a section where you guys test out a ton of mice and keyboards and come up with the winners for different categories, e.g. for surfing, office work, games, etc. It would also be cool to know all the pros and cons of each one. Dave. I'd put keyboards and mice right up there with monitors in terms of things that can Im impact your experience, when you're, especially if you're working or gaming all day long. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're ready to do a yeah. weekly mouse or keyboard review unless we hear a serious cry out there from the Texilla crew. Um, how about we share what we use ourselves and why, Dave, and folks that want us to review other products can email us. Um, for mice, personally, I use the Logitech G5 mouse. It's not too fancy, but it has a few programmable buttons on there, and it's very comfortable for extended use periods. Z you, you've actually gamed for 18 out of 24 hours plus. That's not necessarily true. It's been a while since I've gone for that long. What, like three weeks? Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't played WoW in like two months. Okay. I've been playing more consoles lately, actually. It's kind of weird. But you have used that mouse for like 12 hours I've used it for, for a long time. Long, long stretch time. of time, yeah. Um, I'm, I, I use right-handed hand, mouse primarily. It's a right-handed mouse, and it's pretty comfortable, pretty lightweight. It's got a decent laser on it, and so it's, it's, it's stood the test of time. Yeah, it's, it's weighted, oh, but really? I don't know if it's adjustable. Okay. I think it's just, it is what it is. Okay. Um, as for my keyboard, I use the Ideas on Merck ZXP1000, which was actually sent to me by a Texil Texilla viewer out there who knew I needed a gaming keyboard. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. You remember that? Was that? A while ago. that was a long time ago. We've been doing this for a while. That was over a year ago, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I needed a gaming keyboard. I was complaining about playing WoW on my <laughs> on my regular Apple keyboard. So someone anonymously sent me that uh, that Merc, and I've been nice. using it ever since. I love it. Um, the Zboard software lets you program the buttons for various games um, out there. They have a pretty big library of, of specific gaming layouts for different titles. All we need is like glow-in-the-dark keys. It'll pop up and tell you what the it's The other version does. of the keyboard has has backlit keys. Oh, really? This one, I don't remember. I don't think this one does. Okay. No, I, I, it doesn't have backlit keys. Um, I use this mouse and keyboard for everything, including for when my MacBook Pro is docked to my desk. I've had the same configuration for a couple of years now, though. I'm about to test out the new lefty mouse from Razer, the Death Adder. <laughs> the Death Adder. It sounds pretty badass, but I haven't taken it out of the box yet. Razer's names for their mice are getting the weirder Death and weirder. Adder. Have you seen the one they have that has like 17 buttons? Yeah. I mean, They're crazy. Yeah. Like, I just can't handle that much. I don't know. I have to try left-handed. It, it feels weird to me because I've been doing right-handed for the for my entire life for mice. Really? Yeah. You've never, like, switched the right-handed mouse to your nope. left hand? Mm -mm. Uh-oh. Nope. Be a good week to frag Veronica when she pops that thing out of the box. <laughs> Look, I, I use the basic Microsoft optical mouse, which is literally the Microsoft basic optical mouse or the comfort optical mouse. Both have a scroll wheel. They work lefty or righty. And the left and right buttons is pretty much all I use regularly, including and the scroll wheel. 15 bucks, 
just about everywhere. The $20 uh, comfort version has four-way scroll like it has a couple more buttons that are programmable. I just keep coming back to these no matter what I try. If you want wireless, you do a wireless one for 30 bucks. It uses its own dongle that connects to your USB port so you don't have to use Bluetooth, which because sometimes Bluetooth sucks. For gaming, I find most of Microsoft Sidewinder mice super uncomfortable. It's like somebody went, you know, the X-Wing, the TIE Fighter, those are really cool designs. Let's put all those angles into a mouse and then they forgot to actually test it before they started making them. It's just too many edges to hold on to. Uh, a bunch of folks in know swear by Razer's gaming mice, something like the <clears throat> Death Adder. Death Adder. Feels a lot better in my hand compared to the Microsoft Sidewinder mice. I think you mean your hand. Yeah. It's a lefty mouse. I thought they had left and right versions of it. I think it's only a left. The Death Adder is only lefty. We'll it's take their, this first, offline. their first, first lefty, lefty mouse? Yeah. Okay. Well, they have a, a similar they've got, I'm sure they've got similar well, look, designs. It's probably like the Puff Adder or the Cobra Shriek. Or <laughs> the Cobra Shriek. <laughs> well, the you know, Death Adder, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, the, for keyboards, I still think IBM Model M buckling spring or ALP switch based keyboards are the bomb. A very loud bomb, by the way. They can wake a sleeping spouse at the other end of the house when you're typing 70 words per minute on deadline, but they feel great when you're doing it. PCKeyboard.com sells them for 69 bucks as the Customizer 101 or the Space Saver 104 slash 105. If you want a prettier keyboard, check out Matthias. Tactile Pro it uses Alps mechanical switches, has sculpted key tops with laser etch symbols that you'll never wear out, a built-in three-port USB hub, and has already sold out of the second production run of $150. This is like $150 keyboards. They started selling them in January. They've gone through two production runs already. You can pre-order one from the next run that's coming up right now at matthias.ca slash tactile pro three, I think. That's a really nice, basically that's the super cool version of the $70 mm. Alp Switch mechanical switch, mechanical buckling spring based keyboard. Um, all the various membrane style keyboards are pretty much a very distant second place to me. I just go for the one that feels the least meh when I can't use a mechanical keyboard. Keyboard and mouse, very important to your, yes. to your overall comfort yes. and usability of your machine. And positioning them correctly so you're ergonometrically set up properly so that you don't basically damage yourself while you're still young and spending too much time on the Facebook Ow. and the World of Warcraft. Ow. Ow. Well, if you guys are on the... You using that hand Ow. yet. Oh, wait, yeah. Ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> If you're on the search for a better Bluetooth earpiece, keep watching. But first... Verizon and Droid apps, people. They have access to every tool the phone has, including the compass, the GPS, accelerometer, image capture, and for those who love watching their shows on the go, a video player. Psst, try Techzilla. The power of the Android apps allows them to run in the background for true multitasking support, unlike some phones out there. Background alerts and enhancements of each other's performance. Verizon's dominant network and 3G coverage create an unparalleled mobile data solution to keep you connected to the web and allow you to run heavy data-rich features anytime, anywhere. And with the ever-expanding Android market, you'll always be able to quickly download the apps you need to get the most out of your Droid. If that sounds good, head over to DroidDoes.com. You'll find the latest and greatest apps for your Verizon Droid. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Paper.ly. Paperly? <laughs> Following folks on Twitter is a great way to find interesting links and see what people are talking about, whether it's the newest cat video or breaking news from across the globe. The only problem is that the stream of information goes by so fast it can be hard to keep up with it. That's where Paperly comes in. This site creates a digest of links, media, hashtags, images, and more based on the tweets that the people you follow post. It lays out all this information like a newspaper broken into different sections by subject matter or media type. You can even see your popular hashtags. The basic sections could be technology, health, stories, arts and entertainment, and they're all filled with stories from your friends and people of interest. This way, instead of just seeing bit.ly links in a Twitter stream, you're seeing article descriptions and summaries and full images instead of just a TwitPic link. Like a newspaper, a new edition comes out every day, and you can have Paperly notify you when it comes out. Plus, you can even read the papers of other folks on Twitter, so you'll never run out of new stories from the Twitterverse. Check out Paperly today, and thanks to Joseph on Google Buzz for the suggestion. Rumor has it you've been playing around with a new Bluetooth headset lately. I have. I have. It's the, uh, well, actually, Jim, our beloved leader, Maximus, threw this on my desk, and it's, it's Aleph's latest jawbone. It's the $80 icon. Threw it into my cubicle and asked me how it holds up compared to other Bluetooth headsets out there. Jawbone, of course, having a fantastic reputation uh, for doing noise reduction-based headsets, and they either fit in people's ears or they don't. Um, it's small. 
It's like one and three quarter inches by under an inch by under three quarters of an inch thick, and it weighs a third of an ounce. Hold that. Oh. Yeah, it weighs nothing. It's got two controls actually on it. If you look at the bottom, there's a nice, like, you can actually tell it's on or off, and it doesn't turn itself on or off by itself switch right there. And then there's a little, well, basically the other control is a button, uh, mel like a multifunction button on the end. So if you want to answer a call or ignore a call or do something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's it for controls. People either love it or hate it in terms of the fit. It comes with a selection of, of little, well, here we go. Fit option oh. A, earbud only. Fit option B, earbud and ear loops. You can basically put a either just a uh, an ear loop on there. You can need, ah, there's English in my sentence here somewhere. Basically, it has a removable ear loop, so you can hook that over your ear if you want to, or you just basically jam one of the earbuds over there and find the one that fits into your ear. And I was actually pretty happy with the way this fits. I can play around and put another one on there real quick. But it's pretty similar to previous designs. It's got a couple of microphones in there and it uses its Noise Assassin 348 type technology. Um, and like previous Jawbones, the Wii Nub here, AKA the voice activity sensor, needs to touch the side of your head or it won't work, which leads you to the fabulous, I'm putting a Jawbone in my head twist, <laughs> which always Oh, the, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, oh, yeah. Okay. It's like, and then twist it 90 degrees to the front of your face. When you do that and you turn it on, it actually tells you how many hours of battery life are left. You can pick the voice. Um, and it sounds actually shockingly good. Um, Aleph claims, or, or I should say people listening to me found it, I, when I say shockingly good, like when I called Roger or my wife, they went, oh, it sounds just like you're talking on your iPhone, which is usually like a huge step above what most Bluetooth headsets sound like. Um, Aleph claims four hours of talk time, 10 days of standby. I haven't drained it yet, so those numbers sound pretty good to me. Um, I've actually been ignoring the icon's built-in voice that tells me the battery level, because when you hook it up to an iPhone, when you configure it, mm -hmm. it puts a little battery level app next to the iPhone's battery level. So, you know, it basically, the little onboard OS on the icon, which, which the Aleph people are very excited about, actually tells you, reports back to the phone what the battery level is, right next to the battery level icon for the phone itself. It looks like a little peace pipe, but that's actually supposed to be a jawbone <laughs> style see that headphone. The, the cracks and, and <laughs> the chips cracks in your iPhone. And gnarled, yeah. Uh, the voices are customizable through Jawbone's MyTalk website. You basically, you plug the headset into the USB port of your computer, you launch the MyTalk website, you install the little software, and it does all of your firmware updates, and you can do things like choose a voice, like Rogue, which is a horrible voice I would never want in my ear. And then there's custom applications for the OS that you can dump onto the earbud. Don't get really excited because custom applications equals like what happens when you press the button on the end here, like pulling up 411 or a voice to SMS program. Yeah, well, that's something. So, yeah, <laughs> which is probably more customizable than most uh, Bluetooth headsets get. Um, it's tiny. I really like the fact that it's tiny, it weighs nothing. It's got a half dozen different design choices. If you're into you know, matching multiple headsets to your clothing, you're gonna have to buy multiple ones because these little plastic panels don't snap off. Um, it's a good mic. They call it the Noise Assassin 2.5 with wind reduction. It works uh, actually surprisingly well. I was standing next to a diesel truck in a passing train and Roger could actually hear me fairly crisp and clearly. Uh, it does multi-point Bluetooth connections so it'll connect to multiple phones simultaneously. Uh, on the con side, some people cannot figure out a way to get these to stay in their ears. And there's no manual audio level control. It does audio normalization, which actually worked for me because I'm sitting next to, as I walked towards the diesel truck, the audio got louder in my ear. Um, I just couldn't jam it all the way to the ultimate, right. you know, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't change, you can't change the volume yourself, so if that's going to drive you nuts, it's going to drive you nuts. That would drive me nuts. It would probably drive you nuts. It works actually shockingly well. I haven't given it the ultimate, ultimate test, which is mm -hmm. trying to talk with the window down on my truck at highway speeds, but pretty much nothing below like a 200 watt yeah, stereo amplifier Yeah, don't distract yourself too much work. trying to test this guy. <laughs> what? I can't hear you! Um, 80 bucks, I give it a thumbs up, and uh, I, I actually added it onto the short list. Another one to check out is a Plantronics 875. A lot of people are really liking that one. Yeah, I so. have the previous version of this, so I'm looking forward to trying out this one as well. I just use them around the house. I'm not like a, I don't have a car, so mm -hmm. I really have no good time to you know, wear a Bluetooth headset. People use these on the street when yep, they're walking. Yeah, hate that. 
Hate, hate it. that? Hate it. No, I'm not that guy. You don't like the I cycle? Like, that guy. I don't believe you're saying that. What are you? I'm going to kill you. No, it was like I was on an airplane one time, and the guy gets on the airplane going to his seat, and he's like having an argument with someone with the headset in his ear, and, the, and me and the guy next to, to me were just like, you look like a crazy person, a crazy person getting on an airplane. In a really nice suit. He was wearing a nice suit. Yeah, yeah, they're always wearing a nice they suit. I actually are. did have somebody walking down the street going, I'm going to kill you just yeah. as they walk by and I'm like, and like, the guy whoa, realized. Whoa. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> coming up next, wireless earbuds for the bedroom. We've got that and the proper speed of gravity coming up. But first, a word from our sponsor, Click It or Ticket. Guys, it's a fact. Men are less likely than women to buckle up. In 2008, 66% of male drivers and 74% of male passengers 18 to 34 killed in passenger vehicles were not wearing their seatbelts. Don't become a statistic, wear a freaking seatbelt. Especially at night. Two thirds of people who die in accidents at night are not buckled up. You may be a safe driver, but you do not know who is out there. It's not cool to not wear it. Police will be out in force over Memorial Day weekend and hundreds of state and local law enforcement and highway safety officials across the nation will participate in Click It or Ticket 2010 from May 24th to June 6th. They'll be looking for you day and night and making sure that everyone is all buckled up. Click It or Ticket. This next email comes to us from Daniel, who's been having some trouble hopping on the sleepy train. He says, I have a hard time getting to sleep at night unless music is playing, and I've managed to junk many a headphones and earbuds by falling asleep while having them on. Is there any kind of wireless in-ear stereo earbuds that will fit comfortably and not hurt my ears as bad as iPod earbuds or over the around the ear units do? Daniel S. Mm. Mm. Well, there's another wireless technology out there that you might want to look into called Clear, which we like. It's CD quality audio, and it supposedly drops a lot less than Bluetooth does, and you've had some experience with that working out? It sounds, I've heard the Sennheiser uh, headphones that use it, they sound amazing compared to any Bluetooth headset I've ever used, or, well, those or are the earbuds ones I've ever used. I was about to talk about the, um, the Sennheiser MXW1 totally wireless headphones are around $500, but they really are totally wireless. There's a base that plugs into your audio player of choice, or your, your sound source, like your computer, for example, and the earbuds each have their own little wireless wireless receivers inside of them. So they kind of look like earrings. Earrings kind of. <laughs> or Lieutenant Uhuru's uh, yeah, yeah. Star Trek. Uh, uh -huh. Like her old like, communicator, her right. old school communicator. Um, another set would be the Sleek Audio SA6s with the W1 wireless adapter, but unfortunately they seem to be like totally out of stock everywhere I've looked at the moment. I think this is because the SA7s are coming out soon, uh. and so they're probably trying to clear out the rest of their stock and make room for the new, um, new sets. You might be able to find them eBay or something though if you look and they're around the same price as the Sennheisers as well. If you want to go back to Bluetooth, the uh, Eddie Modics have the Eddie 8s earbuds for around 220 on Amazon. And they also work with an adapter, as most of, most of these will, especially the wireless ones, because they need something to Connect communicate to. with. Um, it can pair with any Bluetooth stereo device like a computer. I'm not a huge fan of Eddie Modics. I, I like their, their earbuds. Do I've you used say Edimotics or Edimotics? I usually say Edimotics. Edimotics? I have no idea if I'm saying it right. Yeah, we just make <laughs> it up as we go. Um, they're worth a look if you want to check those out. They're kind of, you know, upper mid range, and if Patrick likes them, then they've got to be pretty I've never, good. I've never heard their Bluetooth headsets. Okay. I like their traditional wired, strangle you in your sleep. I don't. Headsets. They always feel really um, kind of cheap to me for whatever reason. They sound amazing. They don't sound amazing to me. Well, whatever. I mean, I haven't used them in a few years, argument so that could be part of the argument for another day. Argument for another day. On the much lower price point, for under eighty dollars, you can try the Sony DRBT100 Bluetooth earbuds and receiver. The main issue I've heard with most people having with Bluetooth is that when you move around too much, like when you're out jogging, you can get a lot of skips and breaks in the sound. That's annoying. That which is totally annoying. But you might not have that problem if you're just sleeping, unless you're like a really active sleeper. Or a cat sits on your head. Or a cat Cats it on your head, you know, whatever. Um, have you considered getting one of those sound pillows? It's a pillow with a little speaker inside so you don't Ooh. disturb your partner. There's a few different things like that out there. You found one too that was a device that you actually slip into your pillowcase. It was like Sanjin is one that like slides under your pillow, but you uh, found this one, the sound, I was like, you know, they used to sell these at Radio Shack a thousand years ago. It's really called that. It's really called the sound pillow. Yeah, they didn't sell the sound pillow. They had other devices that were designed to slide under your pillow so you could yeah. listen to radio without disturbing your parents. It's a pillow and it's got two little speakers in there and you can play your music 
music and, and listen it, to your TV shows. It throbs little yellow lines. And it'll, it'll lull you to sleep with the low bass frequencies slowly pulsing into your brain. Um, yeah, you could maybe put your earbuds under the pillow too and turn the volume all the way up. Producer Serafina has used that method and she says it works perfectly. perfectly. So there, you won't even buy, need to buy a new set of earbuds. Just rip the guts out of your existing earbuds. Well, he said he broke them all anyway, so. Why not? Eh. Or get a little, get a little three inch speaker and solder it to like your old headphones. That's a thought. And then you've got a little sound pillow of your very own. Ooh, what if we get like a uh, Oh, we should make range? that. Let's make our own sound pillow. If we could find a really flat, like full range six inch speaker, yeah. it'd be epic. A three inch I think would be big enough. Six inch would be a little too Don't much, Don't you want I the think. thump? No, not in bed. <laughs> Steve! Patrick a wants upset. a thump in bed, though. He wants the thump. I'm just not he likes touching the thump. that. Look at that! Steve wants to remind me about basic physics. He writes it acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters squared or 32 feet per second per second, not 32 meters squared, as you stated, while describing the shock absorbing abilities, capabilities of the Pelican cases. Quote, don't you just love your anal retentive detail oriented viewers? Unquote. Steve, I thank you and everybody else who wrote in about this. Yes. Yes. A lot of gravitas there. <laughs> yeah. Get 30. it? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Have anything to say about the gravitas of that situation? I'm thinking about going back to the thumping from before. <laughs> yes, 32 <laughs> feet per second per second. I don't know why I said meters, but that would be like acceleration on some larger, denser well, place. Well, actually, Patrick. Oh, my goodness. The number, in fact, for the acceleration of gravity actually changes depending on where you are in the world, even if the starting altitude of the free fall is a constant. How's that for an ass kicker when you're calculating the speed <laughs> your whatever is falling out of, your notebook is falling nice. out of the sky inside of its pelican case. Totally. Mm. And for our last note of the day, Mike has a suggestion for Thomas from last week who was trying to find a good program or site to host multi-user video chats. For video chat, I suggest the viewer use TalkBox at TalkBox.com, that's T-O-K-B-O-X.com, which is free, supports 20 users, and is entirely web-based, which means no software to install. Cool. Mike V. Well, thank you to Mike and Steve for writing in. Oh, by the way, we, we, should, we should point out, the, our, some of our friends here at work have some friends at a place called Miso. If you're familiar with Foursquare, the concept is pretty much the same. Instead of checking into locations, earning, the, earning badges because you went to like the Walmart or the local bar or maybe even the library if you're in a particularly fantastic community, you can check into Miso, log and share the media that you're watching. So if you're a fan of Techzilla and you use Miso on the iPhone, you can unlock exclusive Techzilla badges and win special prizes. Ooh. Go to GoMiso.com to download Miso and start checking in so we can actually track you while you sleep with your pillow. No, we swear that's not really what we're trying to do, really. Thumping while we calculate your gravitas. And for all of you watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how to's, you ask us, we'll do it. But we need those emails, so don't be shy. Send them on in to techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us the link with an email in an email with the subject video question in the subject line. The subject in the subject line should yes. be video question. in an email to us. That's the one. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Texilla. Punctuation makes the sentence come out completely wrong. Punctuation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really wrong. 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 Sentence. With your pillow. No, we swear and that's not really what we're trying to do, and really. Thumping while we calculate your gravitas. gravitas. <laughs> 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 <laughs>